All right, we get another one of our derivative rules here. And this tells us what to do with the sum of two functions. So we call it the sum rule. So if we have one function f of x plus another function g of x, how do we differentiate that sum? Well, turns out derivative works really nice with addition and subtraction. So we focus on the first part, differentiate that, focus on the second part, differentiate that, and then just add the two results. So this is our sum rule. It also works for subtraction as well. So, you know, we could replace each of these with a minus sign as well. Also works for subtraction. And really what this, what this rule is saying, that's not clear. So that could be a minus as well. So what this rule is really saying is that wherever we see a, a plus sign or a minus sign, we can split up the derivative over that addition or subtraction. So wherever we have addition or subtraction, we can split up the derivative at those distinct signs. So in our, in our functions, wherever we have addition or subtraction, we can split it up and just focus in on each of those individual pieces then and differ, differentiate them individually. So like we said, this also works for subtraction. So we have it written for sums, uh, addition, but it also works for subtraction. So just to, just to keep that in mind. All right, so really what is, what is this kind of saying? This is really, on the left side of this equation, this is the derivative of the sum of two functions. And it's equal to the sum of the derivatives of those two functions. So here we're just differentiating one big function. And the way we actually do that is we just calculate the derivative of each of these individual functions and then just add or subtract the result depending on what was there originally. So it makes, it's important to kind of consider, you know, related to these sums, it's important to kind of consider this in the context of our constant multiple rule as well. So what's the difference between these two functions, f of x with a k in front and f of x plus k. So this constant k here is a constant multiple. So it's actually being multiplied into our function. So it's k times f of x. So these, are, these two different functions here are very different. They're behaving very different. So this is constant multiplication and this is a sum of two functions we have a function f of x where conceivably there's some variables and then we have this other function k which is just the constant function so we're doing the sum of two functions here so here we have a constant multiple that's getting multiplied into our function and here we have the sum so we have variable part with a constant added on. And so how do we differentiate each of these? Well, it's going to be very different. So when we differentiate, the constant in this constant multiple situation kind of survives. So it just becomes, according to our constant multiple rule, the constant multiple just sticks around in front. So it's k times f prime, the derivative of our variable part. In this sum case, the way this is going to work is when we have the sum of two functions, we just differentiate each of those functions individually. 
So derivative of f would be f prime. And then the der derivative of a constant function, this is one of our kind of two basic forms that we started with way back at the, at the beginning. Derivative of a constant function all by itself is zero. So notice when we, when we go through the differentiation process here, the constant in the constant multiple kind of survives. It survives the differentiation. It sticks around. If we have a k that's being added on at the end and it's not attached to a variable, it doesn't make it. Kind of gets kind of gets killed off by the differentiation process. It just goes to zero once we do the derivative. So there's a kind of an important distinction here based on what's what the um, operations are. So constant multiplication versus just addition. Differentiation process is going to be a little different for that constant. All right, so let's let's try a, a few more examples. So we've kind of set the stage now for with talking about these sums and and differences and and now and and constant multiplication this strategy of term by term differentiation so the idea is when we look at our function we want to differentiate it we kind of the the addition signs and the subtraction signs kind of give us a natural breakpoint for where to kind of look at the different pieces of our function and so in this first one, we're going to differentiate x cubed plus 5x. And it's really that addition sign that kind of splits this up into kind of there's two different terms here. And so this sum rule, or more generally this term by term differentiation, what it lets us do is we're just going to identify each term and we're just going to differentiate that separately. So normally the sum, the sum rule would say this derivative is equal to the derivative of x cubed plus the derivative of 5x. Again, kind of like the power rule, kind of like the constant multiple rule. We don't normally show this. So once we get the hang of using these kind of basic derivative rules that we're seeing, we don't actually show this in our work. We would probably just go right from here right to the answer. But what we're kind of doing in our head is we look at this first term, differentiate it. So what's the derivative of x cubed? It's 3x squared. Then we go to the second term, this 5x. What do we get there when we differentiate that? We're going to differentiate this completely on its own. So derivative of 5x would be 5. And because there was an addition here, we just add the results. So our derivative here is 3x squared plus 5. All right, let's, let's try another one of these. And let's try part 2. So here we have x raised to the 4 minus 3 over x squared. And so for this idea of term-by-term -term differentiation, when we look at each of our pieces, we want each of our pieces to be in this form a times x raised to the power r. So, so we can differentiate ultimately using some sort of power rule. We'll differentiate each of those terms completely separate. And then we just keep the original addition or subtraction signs. So here we have subtraction. Now the issue here is this second term is not in the right format. So first we need to rewrite this to get everything in, in the right format. So we'd have derivative of x to the 4, and we've seen how to do this before. We'd write this as a minus 3, so separate off the constant, make it a constant multiple, and then we have, we would write that as x raised to the minus 2. So we've seen how to do this before. This was a previous example where we just looked at this individual piece, 3x to the minus 2. Um, all right, so now we have everything in the right format. So what we're going to do is we're really just going to focus in on the first term here. Just differentiate that. So what's the derivative of x to the 4? Four? 4x four cubed. Then we go to our second term. 
do the derivative there. So just basic power rule with a constant multiple in front. So we bring down the negative two, bring it down, multiply it with the three that's already there. So we get a, um, well, there's a negative, it's a negative three. So negative two times negative three would give us a positive and well you know let's keep it as subtraction we'll end up with a double negative but let's keep it as subtraction so we bring down the negative two multiply with the three we get a negative six and then we do our power rule so we get x raised to the negative three so we subtract one from the exponent and those are the two derivatives this is the derivative of our first term this is the derivative of our second term and then we just keep the arithmetic in between the same. So there was originally negative, so in our derivative here there's going to be a negative in between. Realistically though, the we would have a double negative here, so it would be 6x raised to the negative 3. So, you know, you can either be explicit with this, or yet really keep the original addition and subtraction signs, or you can really kind of think of this subtraction as we're just adding negative 3x raised to the negative 2. Um, in any case, this is what we would end up with for our derivative. And so we've seen it for, in these first two, we've seen this process for two terms where there's an addition or subtraction sign in between. Um, but this can be extended, you know, indefinitely. So here we have three terms that we're going to differentiate. So let's Let's start with our first term here. So the function is 2x raised to the 7 minus x to the 5 plus 8. So if we look at these addition and subtraction signs, there's kind of three natural terms here. So let's just focus in on this first term. It's in the right format ax raised to the power r. So we're just going to differentiate that using the constant multiple rule and power rule. So we bring down the 7, multiply it with the 2 that's already there. We get 14. Keep our variable the same. And then we subtract 1 in the exponent. So we go from 7 down to 6. So we get 14x raised to the power 6. Okay. Then we go to our second term. Here we go. It's x raised to the power 5. Again, that's a good format. We can do that. So we bring down the 5, keep x the same, subtract 1 from the exponent. So we get 5 times x raised to the power 4. And what the sum difference rule says is when we have addition or subtraction in between, um, the derivative just also has that same addition or subtraction in between. So we end up with a negative uh, 5x to the 4 here. So, so far, after the first two terms, we have 14x raised to the power 6 minus 5x raised to the power 4. And we have a minus here because we originally had subtraction. All right, and then we just keep going. So we just keep going for however many terms we have. So here we have our third term, which is just a constant that's getting added on all by itself. There's no x's here. So when we have a constant term that's all by itself, derivative of a constant is 0. And there was addition in between, so there's addition in between for our derivative as well. And, you know, we don't, we don't normally show this. So it's just 14x to the 6 minus 5x to the 4. That's our derivative. All right, so, yeah, just worth noting, in this case, the derivative of a constant function or a constant that's by itself is 0. So that's how we're getting this zero right here. All right. So with this discussion, we, we're, we're kind of still developing some of our rules here. And we've seen how to do a little bit of arithmetic, addition, subtraction, constant multiplication. One thing to note, though, is that the process works the same regardless of the variable that you're using. So a lot of times we use variables x and y. x is sort of the, the independent variable. y is the dependent variable. 
Um, but there's occasions where we use other variables. So a lot of times we'll also use t. So we might have a function y equals x squared, but we might have another function v equal to t squared. So the rules and the process for how we would differentiate this function are going to be essentially the same for this function. And so, you know, just to, to kind of mention the notation here, um, normally how we, oops, how we indicate derivative, we might say dy dt, or, or dy, in this case, not dy dt, dy dx. So y is the actual kind of the name of our function here that we're differentiating, and x is our variable, so we're doing dy dx. Um, we might also call this y prime, just another way to name this function. And then the power rule would work the same. So we bring down the two, put it in front, keep our variable the same, and then subtract one from the exponent. So we end up with two x. Now for this other version, this other function v equal to t squared, the process is going to be actually the, the same, just, you know, the variables are different. So we might say dv dt. So again, v is the name of our function, so that's what shows up here. And t is our variable, so that's what that's why we have dt right here. Um, we might also call this v prime. And the derivative, though, we can still use the power rule. So bring down the 2, keep your variable the same, and then subtract 1. So we end up with 2t for our derivative in that case. And... You know, you can think of, when you see dy dx, think of this as the derivative of y with respect to x. Derivative of v with respect to t. So it's important to, to note this. So the y that we see here, that's what we're actually differentiating. That's the name of our function that we're actually differentiating. And the x that we see in the denominator here, well, not really denominator, but the x that we see down here, this is pure notation, um, but the x is telling us our variable. So the variable that we're differentiating with respect to. All right, so kind of as an extreme example of what's going on here, um, let's differentiate this expression a times t squared plus capital S times t raised to the negative one plus s squared. So apparently there's not many numbers here. There, there's a lot of letters going on. Um, so what are we, how are we gonna differentiate this? Well, we have to look to the notation. And it says, differentiate this expression with respect to variable t. So t is the thing that we're actually going to be differentiating here. Everything else, we're gonna, it's going to be a constant. So a is a constant, and s, capital S here, is a constant. So just keep that in mind. t is our variable, and we can tell that from the notation. And that means anything else, a and s, are really just going to be like constants. The context of this problem, they are. They're just constant terms. So we can kind of decode a little bit of that from this Leibniz notation for our derivative. So that's why sometimes this is a little bit um, more insightful than just prime notation. Prime notation really doesn't tell you anything about the variable that you're differentiating with respect to but we can kind of see that from here. But prime notation's nice and short, so it's a trade-off. All right, so let's actually differentiate this. So we're just gonna go term by term. So let's look at the first term here. Here we go, we have our first term. It's a constant a times t squared. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we're going to 
take the 2, bring it down, multiply it with the constant a. So we'll get 2a times t. And we would subtract 1 from the exponent. We're doing power rule, but we'd end up with 2 minus 1, which is just 1. We don't write the 1. So for this first term, when we differentiate, bring the 2 down, multiply it with the a, gives us 2 times a, and then we have a t. All right, then we go on to our second term. Here's our second term. So s times t raised to the negative 1. Take the negative 1, bring it down, multiply it with the s. So we're going to end up with negative s times t. Then you keep the variable the same, so we're doing power rule. So we bring down the negative 1, multiply it with the s, keep our variable part the same, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we go down to negative 2. And there was addition in between. So, you know, we could either write that as addition, we're adding in a negative term, or we could just think of that all as just subtraction. So normally it's easier to kind of simplify that to just subtraction. And then we go to our third term. Here we go. We got our third term here. And this is s squared. s squared is a constant, or s is a constant, so that means s squared is a constant. So there's no variable part here. So when we differentiate this, um, this is just a variable part. So derivative, or this is just a constant part, no variable. So when we differentiate it, it's just the derivative of a constant. So derivative is just 0 here. So we end up with a plus 0. So our derivative is 2at minus s times negative or times a uh, t raised to the negative 2 and that's our derivative and you know it might be tricky you might be tempted to try a power rule here but you don't need to because s is just a constant so that means s squared is also a constant so when we differentiate derivative of a constant is zero all right, so that's some good practice using the sum, difference, and even some of our constant multiple rules. And we see that the process doesn't change if we are looking at different variable terms.